Hey there, my name is Megan and welcome to my channel or welcome back. Okay guys, so hopefully you can see my screen. So these are all of the fiction books that I've read this year. So let's go ahead and start ranking them. I'm gonna sort them by star rating first. So we have Gothicana by Runix. This is a romance, like a gothic romance. And I gave it three stars. Next we have Compass and Blade, which is like a swashbuckling YA fantasy. And I rated this one three stars as well. So here's where the challenge comes in. Did I like it more or less than Gothicana? Um, oof. I'm going to go with less than Gothicana. I feel like the romance was way too rushed and unbelievable. Next, we have The Silver Blood Promise by James Logan. I really enjoyed The Silver Blood Promise. I thought it was a lot of fun. I gave it four stars. I definitely am excited for the next one to see, like, learn more about the mystery of Lucan's father. Next, we have Service Model by Adrian Tchaikovsky. This is a sci-fi, and unfortunately, this one was a disappointment for me. I found the ideas presented, like in this post-apocalyptic robot world, really cool, but I just found the execution for me personally lacking, so I ended up giving this two stars. Um, I can appreciate the intelligence behind it, I just didn't connect with the story. Next we have The Spell Shop by Sarah Beth Durst, and this one is like a cozy, romanticy type story, and this one missed the mark for me as well. I loved the atmosphere, the prose, the writing, but I just didn't love the story itself. I found it a bit discombobulated. So if I had to decide between Gothicana, Compass and Blade, and The Spell Shop, which of these I liked the most, I probably would put The Spell Shop at the front of these just because I really did like the atmosphere that she created and there were really cute elements of the story. Next we have The Midnight Feast by Lucy Foley and this was another unfortunate uh, disappointment for me because I loved the Paris apartment. I really liked the guest list and this one I just didn't connect with the story. I didn't connect with the characters especially the antagonist. Ooh, so I rated it three stars but did I like it? more than Gothicana, less than Gothicana. I'm going to put it in front of Compass and Blade, but behind Gothicana, I really liked Gothicana's atmosphere. Like it was gothic and dark and creepy and it had, or the setting was at this like really gothic school. I enjoyed that. So, all right, next we have The Three Body Problem by Sishin Liu. This was a five-star read for me. Next we have Persuasion by Jane Austen. This was a four star read for me. Ooh, did I like it more or less than The Silver Blood Promise? Oh, I'm gonna put it before The Silver Blood Promise only because I really think that Jane Austen did a really good job of capturing like society at that time. Um, and we're laying that into the written word and as someone who, you know, 100 years later is reading her work, or 200 years later, you know, it's just kind of interesting to see how society or what society was like back then. And I just love how she was able to capture that in her books. All right, now we have The Dark Forest, also by Sishin Liu. And this is the second book in the Three Body Problem trilogy. And I loved The Dark Forest. I found it to be the best one out of the three. So I also gave it five stars. There we go. Alrighty, we are moving along to Death's End, the last book in Earth's, what is it, Remembrance of Earth's Past? Is that the name of the trilogy? trilogy? Oh, I gave all of these books five stars, and they were so different. So I think I'm going to keep this ranking as it is, because The Dark Force was my favorite, but The Three Body Problem just introduced the story, and just introduced the world, and the conflict, and the science, and the aliens, and all of that. And then Death's End, like, goes into this huge, like, philosophical science that lost me a little bit at times. And while it was still enjoyable and I still loved it, it was just a little bit hard to follow along with. Alrighty, we have Contagion by Aaron Bowman. This is a YA sci-fi about, like, an alien contagion. <laughs> exactly what it sounds like. All right, so did I like it more or less than any of these other books? Oh, my gosh. Hmm. 
see, it's so hard to like compare these because there there's so many different genres. Like, how do I compare all of these? Oh gosh, I'm gonna put it in front of Compass and Blade because I thought that the story was better and the science was cool and the characters were cool and it was like a fleshed out story. But the Midnight Feast just kept me guessing. Like, Lissy Foley knows how to make you you know, want to turn the page constantly and give you those little tidbits and make you want to find out what happened. Like, she's excellent at that. All right, The Book of M by Pung Shepherd. Three stars. I'm going to put it in front of Compass and Blade. This I had a love-hate relationship with, and I've actually already unhauled it because I thought the character development was so good. And the way that she talked about memory and made me really feel for what these characters were going through, she did such an excellent job with that. But just the fantasy aspects and the lack of explanation for the weird fantasy elements she included was just unexcusable, and it kind of ruined the story for me. So that's why I gave it three stars. The Giver by Lois Lowry. See, these are classics. These are so hard to compare. I don't know. I've read The Giver so many times, but I, it's a four star. I knocked it actually down from a five star because it is a little bit boring at times, like especially for a book for kids. All right, I'm going to bump it in front of The Silver Blood Promise just because I love the themes explored in The Giver. I love how it discusses memory and the importance of memory and all of that. Alrighty, we're coming to Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. I'm going to give that one four stars. And did I like it more or less than The Silver Blood Promise? Um, I'm actually going to keep it here because The Silver Blood Promise for me was just way more engaging. It was way easier for me to get through. Foundry Side is more complex with its magic system and its plot. And there were times where, you know, I was listening to the audio, but this was the second time I've read it where I didn't even want to pick it up. <laughs> I found the characters way more likable and, and engaging in The Silver Blood Promise than I did the Founders Trilogy. But still a great book. All right, Immunity by Aaron Bowman. This is the sequel to Contagion. I'm actually going to put it behind Compass and Blade because I felt like it was rushed. I felt like it was rushed. Some of the things that happened in the plot were explained in like two pages. Cold Storage, blah, wow. Cold Storage by David Coop. Okay, oh goodness. Hmm, I didn't love Cold Storage. This is a sci-fi, an adult sci-fi about a killer fungus. And I didn't love it. Let me see. I think I'm going to put it before immunity, though. Because the story, there were still things I liked about it. I found it unique that we were in the head of this killer fungus or in the consciousness of this killer fungus at times. And I just like stories that kind of evolve around or revolve around um, a contagion or a plague or a pandemic. I always found those interesting. All right, Kytonic by Brandon Sanderson. This is the third book in the Skyward trilogy and the one that I struggled with the most. I felt like the first two thirds of this book were just kind of going around directionless and we really didn't get an explanation until the last part of the book, but the last part of the book was killer. It was so good and that's what saved it for me. So I'm actually gonna bump this up to the top. I think I have a bias, like when it comes to Brandon Sanderson, though, it's like he can do no wrong in my eyes. <laughs> Alrighty, The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. Um, wasn't a fan. I gave it two stars. Uh, I definitely don't like it more than Service Model. It was a huge disappointment. Alrighty, Shorefall by Robert Jackson Bennett. This was my least favorite out of the trilogy. Still a good book still relevant to the story. I'm glad I read it. Also gave it four stars. There's something wrong with it. I just found it the least engaging personally. And then we have Locklands by Robert Jackson Bennett. So book three. And I think I like this one after Foundry Side. So Foundry Side is my favorite. Then I just finished Locklands like two days ago. And there were elements about it that I really liked. And then there were elements that I didn't. Uh, mostly having to do with like the hive mind, which is not even a hive mind. And I don't even know how to explain it. But I just didn't really like it or agree with it or find it plausible. So that was like a huge issue I had with it. Alrighty, the invocations. Um, one star. I did not like this book at all. 
by Crystal Sutherland. It's about witches and someone is killing the clients of these witches. And I just, I didn't like it. I thought it was gory. I thought that all of the women um, just weren't very engaging characters. And I really didn't like some of the themes that um, painted males as evil and bad. The Serpent in the Wings of Night. Oh gosh. Four stars. I believe this book is definitely living up to the hype. This is a vampire story with like Hunger Games type vibes and I really liked it. I really liked the world that the author created. I really liked the characters. The romance was slow burn and it wasn't like the book wasn't filled with smut at all. It was a really slow burn romance, which I wasn't expecting. I thought it was going to be mostly romance heavy. It's absolutely not. It's plot heavy. It's political. It's gory. It's dark. I loved it. All right, we have Antimatter Blues by Edward Ashton. This is the second book in the Mickey 7 series. I don't know how many are going to be in this series, but each book... Um, excuse me, this was a sequel to, obviously, Mickey 7, but it got it set up at the end... Um, with like the potential for more books. So I gave this three stars. Ooh, if I were to rate this, oh gosh, this is so hard. I think I'm gonna put this after Chitonic because I really liked just the world that Edward Ashton created. This human, group of humans that are going to colonize this foreign planet and the interactions that they have with the indigenous life there. And they are not human indigenous life at all. So the way that he portrayed this new species was just really cool and interesting. I enjoyed it. Then we have The Only One Left by Riley Sager. And if you watched my review about this, I really, really like this book. I've read most of his books at this point. And this one was one of my favorites. And I gave it five stars because I just loved the atmosphere that he created with this old gothic creepy house. Just the way he unveiled the mystery and then that ending. And I'm not talking about the twist at the end, which I still liked, but like the way that the book ended with all the characters and what they did. I just loved it. It really spoke to me. And this is definitely one of my favorites of his that I've read. Five stars, but definitely doesn't hold a candle to Sishin Blue. All right, and lastly, we have Make Her by Cassie Alexander. This is the third book in the Transformation Trilogy, which is a Beauty and the Beast um, romantic retelling for adults. And I liked it, but I feel like she struggles with expanding on her world, but yet her characters are really fun, and the romance was good, and these books are super, super quick to get through. I enjoyed the whole trilogy, so I'm going to bump it up after, after Anti-Matter Blues. All right, so here is all of the books, fiction books at least, that I have read so far in 2024. So definitely very heavy on the three stars. I am glad that I still have a couple months left in the year to keep reading because I really would like to read more five-star books, really want to find a book that I just absolutely love and can really just rant and rave about. I feel like most of the books I've read so far have been just kind of mediocre. Um, and even my four-star books, y'all, Founder Side and Shorefall were rereads for me. <laughs> so we're taking that away. Technically, I've only read five four-star books. All right, you all, I hope that you enjoyed this video. It's here ranking all of the books that I've read so far in 2024. Let me know in the comments maybe some of your favorite books of the year or some of your disappointments or if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. And I will see you all in another video soon. Goodbye.